Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Guns N' Roses discussion. Um, if you haven't checked out the albums video, go do that first because we'll be giving away things about our albums lists in this video, probably. Um, exciting stuff. Exciting stuff. Guns N' Roses top 10 songs, of course. They had more than 10 albums. Thank God they don't. Uh, we would be doing uh God. top 20 songs but to be honest in terms of like length it's probably the equivalent of like nine ten albums because of how long their albums are <laughs> um join again by ryan uh and i'm gonna go first with my number 10 yep. which is from use your illusion one and it is the opening track right next door to hell really cool riff Headbanging song, really heavy, really cool. Um, just like great way to kick off the album. Shame that it's so long, but I, I do feel like if Use Your Illusion, the whole package of Use Your Illusion was put into like a 45, 50 minute album, it would be pretty good. So, Right Next Door to Hell is one of the highlights, and it's my number 10. Very nice. Uh, nine number ten. I'm expecting it to probably be on your list. Uh, from the debut album. But my Michelle. Um, yeah, this is just a brilliant, absolute awesome rocker. Uh, love the intro, kind of slow guitars, and then, bam, big drums, big riffs. Uh, and then the Axel comes in with this really kind of aggressive vocal. Don't really know what the song's about, but it sounds interesting. Um, and yeah, it's just an awesome rocker. Uh, the band absolutely tread on this one great guitars especially love the drums i think and the kind of aggressive vocal uh so that's my number 10 my michelle my number nine we're gonna have a lot of appetite for destruction i think uh we're sticking with it with my number nine and it's gonna be mr brownstone um cool intro really great percussion and great riffs throughout it's so one thing about appetite is that uh the songs are really like interestingly structured they kind of go off into different directions, which is really cool. And there's loads of catchy hooks and catchy riffs in each song, and this is no exception. I, weirdly, I don't, I don't think the chorus is that great. Like, the chorus is fine, but the rest of the song is so great that it gets onto the list because of that. Um, yeah, the chorus is a little bit, like, annoying, but I can get I can get past it because the, play, the instrumentation is great, the riffs are awesome, the whole thing is is awesome so apart from the chorus <laughs> number nine mr brown <laughs> interested fair enough uh my number nine from use illusion two uh, i've got 14 years um uh, i've got izzy shadlin on vocals on this my one number eight, i was just gonna say it's my number eight so we we're close is it my... oh very nice very nice i didn't expect it it's on your list um but yeah, it's traveling on vocals, it works really well for me. Uh, and I do actually like it when Axel kind of comes in and do a vocal. Uh, I think that really works. And I, I, I normally like it on these Use Your Illusion albums when they get the piano out. Um, normally, probably because it's less shouty vocals from Axel. Uh, you're going to get more of a ballad style, and that works for me. And yeah, Bloody Style Rocker. Uh, I, I really like this one for me. Good. Yeah, I might have sounded a bit negative about my last two, but eight and up is where we get to Guns N' Roses songs I actually care about. <laughs> so my number eight <laughs> is 14 years from Use Your Illusion 2. Izzy does a great job here. It's almost like a grungy style vocal, you know, um, which is kind of cool. It doesn't really feel out of place despite him singing. And he does have a different voice to Axel, but it works when Axel comes in on the chorus. You're right. That sort of dual vocal is really awesome. Uh, I think the main reason Izzy doesn't sing more often is because Axel had this massive ego and you know axel's like well i'm gonna sing on 15 songs and you can sing on one yeah. <laughs> that's how that's how the dynamic worked and i guess part of that maybe part of the reason why is he left after these sessions and yeah um it's a really catchy song really memorable got it stuck in my head right now in fact um yeah it's probably my favorite song on news your religion too in fact it is i know that is <laughs> <laughs> yeah not surprised well, I'm staying at uh, my number eight, staying at Use Illusion 2. Probably no surprise, I've got Civil War. Um, this song's pretty great, I would say. Um, 
I really like the speaking intro. I'm not sure where that uh, is snipped from, but uh, it works for me. And the acoustic guitars, and it just builds up really nicely. It's a huge kind of heavy metal ballad. Loads of changing dynamics, uh, loud, quiet, constantly changing. And it's just an anti uh, war song, uh, simple as that. Um, I like the vocal in this one, very powerful and the work. Um, a little bit, a little bit screaming maybe towards the end, but I think it's okay. I think the build up is so good, and that's one thing I like on these albums is the build up on these Use Your Illusion albums. The, they've got enough time in the in the album length to spread the song, build the song up to a heavy heavy close, and that's probably why I like this one uh, so much. My number seven, going back to Appetite for Destruction. Not for the last time, obviously. I got Night Train. Um, really, again, catchy, catchy song. Goes pretty hard. Again, Izzy Stradlin plays lead guitar on this song. His part's are super awesome. Um, you know, considering he was the rhythm guitarist, he, he really holds his own playing lead on this song. And yeah, Axel's vocals actually suit the song really well. I think it's a really good vocal performance, which didn't think you'd hear me say that, did you? Um but yeah, Night Train's great. Definitely a big highlight on Type for Destruction. Very nice. Yeah, we're saying that Appetite for Destruction, my number seven, you mentioned it already. I've got Mr. Brownstone. Um, I probably would agree. The chorus, I think it's good. I, th- I do like the chorus, uh, but it's not the best part of the song. Um, Obviously, it's a drug song. I love the bit when his axles singing really fast. It's like, I used to do a little bit, a little bit, do it. So a little got more and more. I love that little bit. And yeah, the the riffs uh, is in Slash here. It's brilliant on the riffs. The percussion is brilliant. Uh, super memorable and uh, quite different, but obviously working uh, for them. And it kind of fits into that rock and roll, 80s, say, drugs, rock and roll style. Um, so yeah, I really like this one. My number seven. I suppose it's worth pointing out with Izzy Stradlin as well is that he's not. he wasn't just a really good guitarist for the band, but I think, you know, from a lot of what I've heard, I think he was a lot of what was keeping them together and, and sort of he was a big part in the songwriting. And I think mm. as soon as the Use Your Illusion sessions happened, he was a bit like, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> um, speaking of Izzy Stradlin, my number six is the other Use Your Illusion song sung by him. <laughs> and it is a song you don't like. It's You Ain't the First from Use Your Illusion 1, which is Guns N' Roses do a country song, which... I think it works really well. The melody is really nice. Mm-hmm. There's a cool slide guitar. Um, I like having something a bit softer from them. And again, the vocals aren't sung by Axel, so it's a win. Number six, you ain't the first. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, my number six, so stay in that acoustic one. Not going to be surprised here. I've got patience. Um, I, I didn't know this song before. Um, I knew most of the other songs on this list. Uh, before I did this discography, but this one was new for me. And yeah, it's brilliant. I love the whistling intro. Obviously, the acoustic guitars are great. Um, and yeah, just way more calm vocal. I've said it a couple of times, but when Axel Rose is singing more calm, less shouty, that really works for me, and that's what I like. And he is doing it here. Um, and yeah, just some really nice lyrics about like relationships, taking it slow. Have a lot of patience, take that. <laughs> and yeah, I think it's a, yeah, it's a really good song, solid song, uh, by far the best from the album. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, Top five. One five. Back to Appetite for Destruction. Welcome to the Jungle. Um, Iconic song with some great riffs, a lot of great attitude. It's a really cool, like, album one, song one way to announce yourself. You know, it's just like, yeah, here we are. Welcome to the jungle. Like, it's cool. Um, Axel's vocals, he, he goes a bit wild at points during the song. And, and I think the song is good enough to survive that. Bridge is really cool, too. Um, like I said, the structure of some of these songs is awesome. And this is a great example of it. Like, um, you have the opening, the, it's the, the first part of the song, which everybody knows, like the intro, and then the first lines, which are really iconic. And then you have the sort of the hook that comes later in the song, which repeats a few times. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's a really iconic song for a reason. Rocks hard, really memorable, really catchy. 
some people are probably sick of it, but I'm not. It's my number five. Very nice. Saying it absolutely for destruction, my number five. You mentioned it in your album ranking video. I've got Paradise City. Um, yeah, I, I'll say I'm a big fan of this song. Um, one I know for quite a while, and it's just got that. It's an instant kind of sing along the intro for me. Um, great iconic uh, kind of song and sing along. Uh, easy to. Uh, it's got the great drums, great riff. Uh, when the tempo changes, I love that. Uh, so that's gone really fast. Um, and yeah, it's just got a super, super fast outro, some great guitar in it. And overall, I think it's just because I've just known this song for so long. Um, it's just a lot of fun for me. Um, really works. And yeah, my number five, Power I See. My number four, yeah, four, uh, is yes. <laughs> Appetite for Destruction again. It's... Uh... Think About You, which is this really cool barnstorming song. Again, Axel's vocals are awesome on this. Um, you know, this Night Train and another song that I haven't mentioned yet are his best vocals on this album for sure. Crazy riffs throughout. And again, I mentioned it, that 12 string acoustic guitar that comes in in the chorus. So cool. Adds a new dimension to it compared to other songs on the album. Really memorable. Really cool. I'll probably go back to this song quite a bit. It was a really cool discovery. So, there. I like the Guns N' Roses. There. <laughs> well, that's, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah, my number four, I just mentioned it. Uh, Welcome to the Jungle. Um, yeah, it's what is a classic. And what a way to introduce yourself to the world. Um, it's so badass. <laughs> Axel Rose, really, really killing it, to be fair to him. And the band, obviously killing it. Um, carrying stuff, to be fair. And yeah, I love the bit. No, 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 no. Knees, knees. Love that bit. Uh, and it slows down when you get high. You never want to come down and stuff like that. Love that part as well. So yeah, like you mentioned, great um, dynamics uh, as well. And yeah, a lot of change ups, lots of like, loads of catchy bits. Um, yeah, it's a classic. Well deserved. Right, bronze medal, number three. These songs are pretty awesome now. Like these are these are great. Um from GNR Lies, you know what's coming. Patience. Really sweet acoustic track. First time I listened to it, I wasn't sure on the whistling. I thought it was a bit cheesy, but I've I've come to like the whistling now. I think it's really cool. Um the fact that it's uh slash Izzy and Duff all playing acoustic guitars is really cool. Like has this really unique atmosphere to the song, the, the trio of acoustic guitars. Um, but the lyrics are actually pretty meaningful. Probably the most like lyric, like best lyrics of that they did. Um, and apparently Axel just came up with them like on the fly and was like, oh, let's write this down. Um, just pretty cool. Um, outro is really cool as well. You know, Gene Eyes is a pretty lazy follow up to Appetite for Destruction, but this song pretty much worth hearing the album just for this um so yeah great song love it number three very you, good man number three you know what's Use coming your you know. yeah, yeah. What top two are gonna be. yeah well it might be the same for me uh my number three use illusion one uh i've got dark cry um yeah, really like the lyrics on this one, the original one, of course, not the second version, <laughs> which was pointless. Um, yeah, and one that, once again, I've said it a couple of times, these ballads I do enjoy, um, that build up to the time of the song and eventually get that heavy reward, that big close. And it's only in the last minute or so of this song where it gets really heavy and uh, Axel gets his vocals out uh, in full force. But yeah, he's singing really nicely on this song. Uh, great ballad, builds really nicely. There's obviously a great guitar solo as well from Slash. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of this one. That's uh, number three. Don't cry. Yeah, I think I think we're going to line up on this top two. Are we going to line up on the placements though? My number two silver medal is from Use Your Illusion One. It's November Rain. Uh, nine minute epic 
track. Um, to me, easily the best thing to come out of these sessions in this era of the band. Axel's vocal fits the song pretty well. I would say Patience is probably also his best vocal, but I think this song is so... It's all otherworldly, the quality to it. The lyrics are simple but emotional. Slash has a couple incredible guitar solos in there. Some of his best guitar work in the entire discography. The strings are awesome, but it never feels syrupy or cheesy or overblown. It feels sincere. But it does feel epic at the same time. Um, again, memorable. It's just it's just a lovely song. And I think most, even if you're not in, well, it, it's not a hard rock song. So even if you're not, you don't think you're into Guns N' Roses, this song probably would be up your street. I mean, I know it's quite a well-known song, but I'd never heard it before this. So yeah, this is a really great, song to discover and i i think it's awesome number two november rain love it i have nothing bad to say <laughs> that's good that's that's brilliant i've got a smile on my face well my number two this is the moment then we're not gonna line up my number two is sweet child of mine yeah sorry but it's my number two uh obviously it's a great song it's a 10 out of 10 songs um it's brilliant i mean that rift obviously it's just irresistibly kind of catchy and memorable just starts with that riff such a brilliant way to start uh, and from that you can almost tell it's going to be something special uh, the band is so tight overall though as well and the vocals um, are brilliant <laughs> brilliant vocals from Max Lowe's here um, can't deny that um, yeah and it just it, it really does make the song and I think musically the band are brilliant on fire and the outro, I love the outro. Where do we go now? Love that. Um, and I like that how the outro was more literal when they were writing it. They just didn't know where to go with the song. So that's where they went, <laughs> saying that over and over again. And yeah, it's an absolute world deserved classic. Um, silver medal, sweet child of mine. And it takes the gold for me. Sweet Child of Mine from Appetite for Destruction. I know, you know, I've spoken to a lot of people and they think it's like overplayed and they're sick of it. I'm not. Every time I hear that riff, I need to hear mm. the entire song. I think it's so awesome. I don't care what anybody says. It never gets old. Bass line is so cool as well. Um, it's, it's like everything they did well in one song. Like you said, there's the cool outro. Structurally, it's really cool because the riff comes back a couple times in the song, but, you know, the best part is that intro. That is so cool. It's just like, oh, yeah. oh, you just yeah. get sucked in straight away. Um, and yeah, I think it's one of the great hard rock songs, honestly. Like, it is an anthem. It is a classic. It's way, like, I like this song a lot more than I like Guns N' Roses. You know I mean? This is not a, this, this song I think is, is, one of the all-time greats and uh yeah i'm happy that i i've i've listened to it like quite a bit in the last few months because it was this song that made me think we should maybe do guns and roses and even like hearing it myself hearing it out you know in the wild or whatever i still don't get sick of it i still think it's amazing so it's easy number one for me as much as i did love november rain maybe with time that'll be my number one because that is an excellent song as well very nice yeah my number one course November in um nine minute epic and yeah I agree this one for me is kind of on par with that Star with, stay with the heaven uh kind of hotel California then classic rock songs for me it just I love it <laughs> I love the strings love the intro like you said it's said it a couple of times already because the roses get the piano out more chilled vocals really works for me um I think that sounds great on it and yeah the, uh, two Brilliant guitar solos from Slash, of course, as well. One is the clo um, slower kind of section and one in that fast section, which I absolutely love, the kind of last couple of minutes, really fast section, uh, nice build-up. And, yeah, I love the lyrics. Um, simple, kind of lyrically, but um, really works for me. Um, and, yeah, I think it was influenced by Elton John, actually, uh, Funeral for a Friend, which um, is really interesting. It makes sense because there's a good... Uh, live version on YouTube but uh, because of Rose and Elton John worth checking out and yeah um, this song it's up there it's an absolute classic like you're saying it's kind of better than anything because of Rose have done this and Switch Out of Mine I would say the other Guns of Rose stuff 
it's not this level. <laughs> um, but this, this, you know, these songs are wildly so popular as well. Um, yeah, absolutely brilliant song. There you have it. Um, you now know officially what the two best Guns N' Roses songs are. That you can't have a different opinion. That's not allowed. Um, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Um, again, if you're a Guns N' Roses fan, you probably enjoyed the last five minutes of this video, but not the rest of what our <laughs> Um But yeah, let us know. We want to see songs lists. We want to hear what people's favorite songs are. Um, we did say in the albums video, the next discography is going to be Queens of the Stone Age. We're also playing a load of other different ones. Just to throw some names out there. The Replacements, The Who, Soundgarden, Pavement, Nirvana, Arctic Monkeys. This is all the kind of stuff we're thinking about. So subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I'm not sure when this will be going up and what the next discography will be, but uh, I'm sure it'll be a good one. Um, I've got the Bob Dylan series going on I've got uh, Anatomy of a Classic going on um, Quick Fire Deep Dives are going to be coming back and yeah plenty of stuff, album of the year and song of the year so yeah, make sure you're subscribed and you're checking out the videos um, thank you very much for watching and hopefully we'll catch you soon <laughs>